Afternoon, what follows now is um, a presentation about the Cheltenham Town Hereford FC Development Centre Education Programme with Hereford and Ledlow North Shropshire College. First of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Andy Bevan and I head up the programme in Hereford. I'm a UEFA A licence coach and what follows now will be the short presentation. So at Cheltenham Town, we have the motto of make it a star, uh, make it happen from the Northern Star, which everyone's long term ambition to achieve what they can achieve and be the best that they can possibly be, whether that be five years, 10 years, 15 years. In terms of what we do in the college programme, we use the same um, ethos as the academy with our culture in our SLR, with our safeguarding, learning and respect. We also use the same values, values the wiser effect, um, for work ethic, integrity, solutions, enjoyment and responsibility. Images on screen of, our, of some of our home games. So who is the development and what is the development programme for? The development programme will cover the four corners of the FA model, the technical, tactical, psychological, physical and social side of the game. What it's for is basically for late developers in the game. It will give players the opportunities that haven't got scholarships within professional football, that want to give themselves that chance to still train and play to the level of that standard by playing in the EFL. And also it's to prepare players to get them into senior men's football uh, at home or abroad in America where we have outlets. Um, just to touch on that, basically, in our college programme in our first year this year, at the start of it, out of 17 players, we had only got one that was dipping their feet into men's football. And we've now got over 12 in our first season, dipping in at level steps six to eight, which if you imagine the football development programme, if you look at the football pyramid, the English football pyramid, Hereford FC are at step two. Uh, local clubs in Herefordshire, Westfield step five, Pegasus step six, Lads Club step five. Um, a club that I work with, Newent Town, are at step six, same as Pegasus. Um, and then we have a reserves at step seven. We also have an Antiguan based side, uh, GNFC, which is connected to Cheltenham Town, representing at step eight. So we try and get players to get it break into the men's football pyramid through what we do as well. So if you look at sort of a programme, if you look on the right hand side, you've got the education programme there. What feeds into that is under 16s and development centres, release players from other clubs, trialists, under 16s. Um, what we then look to go from the education, you look to the pathways that we can opportunities into the youth team, scholars and development players have gone down that route. And also there's pathways into universities, into America, et cetera, again, which I'll touch on in a little while. So how do we do this? Well, every player at the uh, college program has the opportunity and they study with the North uh, Hereford Ludlow North Shropshire College, um, the prospectus form, which you can get from within the, the link that I can send to you. Regular opportunities to play within our development centre and train with them outside of the college programme as well. We do specific goalkeeping sessions as well outside of that, which, which all players are invited to. Fixtures are in the EFL CEFA, which is the English Football League Community Education and Football Alliance. We also have strength and conditioning programmes. We do a lot of performance analysis as all games are videoed and, and filmed and analysed by the players themselves and by myself overseeing it. And again, through the Academy Culture and Values. This is the Hereford and Ludlow North Shropshire College at the top of uh, Hailston Hill. And uh, Listen, I'm quite happy to admit, um, before we come on to the programme, I didn't know there were three colleges up there as well as the Blind College. So you've got Hereford Art College and you've got Hereford Sixth Form College. We are the only college that will offer the football programme which competes against other professional clubs. You will have other colleges that will have other sports programmes, but they will only compete against other colleges. We are the only one that can compete against professional clubs because we're a professional club uh, in the EPPP system. So we started the partnership last year and has worked exceptionally well. Pathways, this is the sort of qualifications that potential careers could include through the sports education program that will be delivered by the college staff. So there's plenty of options there that will give you that sort of option because I know myself having a son who finished at 18 and is like, well, I'm not sure of what career pathway I want. Well, this sports program gives you roots into that. And with what we do in terms of the analysis and the sports journalism that we're trying to bring in certainly ends up helps all of that, as well as the sports coaching and development. 
in terms of the courses, these are the types of courses you can uh, get onto. I won't go into details about these because that's outside my remit. And the college will deliver all of this and they can um, interview you over which course suits you best as those are the grades that you will need to get onto the course. Also involved in it is full access to the gym membership at the college, which is a fantastic gym and, and also instructors there. A little about the, about the training program we, we offer. So training will take place at either Victoria Park or the 3G facilitators in Hereford, whether that Pegasus, HFA or Hereford Academy. Training will be th um, three times a week, including match days. So Tuesday and Friday is coaching. And then on Wednesdays, we'll have our match days. And like I said before, you, there will be additional training sessions outside of that, which you will get invited into. Um, training sessions will be overseen by my, myself. And my staff, I'm a whole review A for A license, as I've said, and all my coaches will be fully qualified coaches. The weekly program will involve similar like 11 v 11 technical sort of sessions. Again, I will touch on this in a little short video as we go into it. Like I said, there's specialised goalkeeping coaching sessions as well. There has been futsal in the past, obviously, since COVID, we haven't had that back into the system as yet. And like I said, there will be opportunities to play outside of this in the football men's pyramid if you show that potential. Again, just touching on a little bit of the syllabus. So if we're looking at the technical side of it, you're looking at receive, retain, combine, convert, pass and possess with a dribble and drive. And then you go into the technical, tactical side of it. And we look on a lot on shape work. Um, we turn in terms of game plans, game based scenarios, game management and set plays are a lot that we'll work on in these training sessions. OK, so give you an idea of some of the clubs that we will play in the EFL and again this is where our college program will you know can't no one else can compete with it unless they're a professional football club um so the EFL as I said is the Football Education Alliance League the teams that we've played are on screen at the moment there's also a national cup competition and our team this year and whilst you know we have a squad of 17 if you look at all those teams on there they probably have 60 to 70 players on their squads and they some of them have three teams some of them have two teams we've had 17 in hours so where it's difficult competing against them it's up to us how we set them up that we match them and in fairness to these group of lads that we've had this year um, they've done exceptionally well they've got through to the last 32 of the competition nationally which was a phenomenal achievement um, and were one away from being drawn away to Chelsea so it just goes to show that if you stick together and you work at things that you can achieve um, great things also what we try to bring in the fixtures uh, the venues as I've got on the left hand side uh, the ILPs which is an individual learning program these are uh, what I will deliver or the staff will deliver to the players about their individual learning team matrix Man of the match is voted every week by the peers and then they get a certificate for that. And then KPIs, key performance indicators. And this is for the whole squad and individuals as well. So I'm going to use Harry Creed. Harry's the skipper this season. And as you can see on there, on the top left is a picture of Harry playing. On the top right, I've got a picture of uh, match attack cards of Jared Bowen and Mason Mount. And then bottom right is pictures of positions that Harry has taken up for me this season. And then in the middle is the super strengths, the development, and then the little bits that I want Harry to work on. So the first thing you can say or look at that, you say, well, Harry Creed's never going to be like a Jared Bowen or a Mason Mount. No disrespect, Harry, but you're not. But no disrespect to Harry, he's not playing Virgil van Dijk every week like they are. So it's all relative to the levels you're at. So those are the sorts of things that we try and do. And that, that we'll touch on that again when we come to the KPIs. Um, so, yeah, those are the man of the matches. So voted by the peers, by the players themselves, and they all go through it. And, and then they're awarded a laminated certificate to keep as reference of their achievements. So we look at KPIs and I look at the KPIs to be the best that you can be. And this goes back to the Northern Star that we were saying at the start. And these are all the little individual things. So you've got as a team, can we average two points a game? This is to win a league, concede more, no more than 1.5 goals. Then you come down to individual stuff. So you're looking at strikers. Can you get off four shots a game? Three strikes on goal should equal a goal. What sort of level of accuracy individually? So if we went through then as a team, and if you wanted to win a league, that's the sort of levels you would need to achieve. I was thinking, you know, we had a KPI at the start of the season was not to concede. Can we go a game where we have a clean sheet? Can we have a game where we score? And can we get a point? That was, that was the level we were expecting against this season. Um, and, and the boys have done fantastic. Like you can see, they've won four games, they've drawn one, um, which, which, which is phenomenal. Um, and then if you look at it, so then every game is broke down, so all the players know what position to play, et 
etc. So they've got their stats for it. And those are shot stats now. This is brought in during the games. So four in the penalty area at the top there, and that means shots inside the penalty box. That's outside the box. And this is for us. And then that's our opposition stats. So out of the whole 12 games on screen at the moment, they, we've had 55 out of 94 on target in the box, 24 out of 61 outside. That's a total of 79 shots on target and out of 155, giving us an accuracy of 51%. Now, can you remember from the previous slide what was average, what was it, et cetera? Um, so I think, you know, we were looking at 60% is elite, good is 55, and average is 50. So 45, sorry. So that's what we're looking at. And if you look at our opposition, we've actually outshot our opponents by, um, you know, six shots. So it just goes to show, but they've been more accurate, hence why that we've lost more games than we've won. If you then go to save percentage, so we work with the keepers on their save percentage and they're at 56%. If you look at elite goalkeepers in the Premier League at the moment, they aim to get 72% accuracies uh, on saves. So again, our keepers, again, need the work to work on that. But as you can see, they are getting better as they go along. Then we come down to the individual stats. So for example, and I'll use Hubert, who's my striker predominantly. Hubert has had 14 out of 20 shots on target in the penalty box and outside he's had one out of five. So my target is Hubert, is shoot when you're in the penalty box. Um, but overall, if you look at it, he's had 14 out of 25, so he's got a 56% accuracy. So he's not elite at 60%, but he's, but he's good. But if you look at this, we say three strikes on, on goal should be a goal. He scored seven goals at a 14 on target. That's every two shots that he hits on target he scores with. So we do this right throughout the whole group of players and they're all individually statted up and, and shared with the players and discussed with the players. We then go on to a player matrix. So the ones in light blue are second years and the ones in dark blue are first years. And what we try and do then is we put a pathway. Can we get players into step six and seven? Can we get them into step seven, eight? And then can we then draft the other players into these levels? And as you can see, we've got quite a lot of players through into these pathways, which, which again is part of what we're trying to do within the college. So I'll just show you a little clip now. These are some of the goals that we've scored this season. So this was away to Bristol City. Um, and we're playing out from the back. So I'll keep plays it to our centre half, who's received it with a closed body, which is in great. We get away with it. We play it down the line. We're going to play a simple pass inside now. Receive on the back foot. Can we play forward into space? Um, and and the, uh, what I will show you now will all be um, different types of goals that we work on based scenarios, but all sorts of different goals, how we create and score them. So that was like building right from the back. This is now, can we break through the lines? So a little setback play it into my striker, the striker now, can we play it into the space with a gap? And what we're looking for here is a first time finish because the keeper's un, un, wrong footed. And again, he just slides it into the far corner because again, using the one, one touch finish. And again, same game, but a little bit of individual brill brilliance here. So a little Maradona roulette to um, squeeze and turn. And they quite enjoyed that. In fairness, the keeper should have saved it, but he toe pokes it into the near post to range it off, which again was a, was a lovely little individual goal for, and that is actually Harrison Creed, the skipper. This is a throw in, so the ball's hit in, and we chip it to the far post, knowing that we'll have an overload on the far post. And again, that's actually the skipper again, diving header at the back post. This is the left back on the ball now, so he plays forward. And we always say, can we keep on momentum and keep playing forward? So he's carried on his run, he's still into the edge of the box and he's going to head it in at the far post and a looping header over the, over the keeper. This goal a little bit different. We're talking about pressing now. So we want to dictate where we want them to play, and then can we squeeze and nick the ball? So we show them to the one side, we lock them in, and then can we try and get a bit of a high press on, which we do, and, and we score a goal. Uh, again, another little pressing goal now. So we show them where we want them to go, come centrally, we squeeze it, squeeze it. And what we try and say is the minute we win the press, can we get a shot off as quick as we can? Because they'll be unsettled, the keepers will be unsettled, and we try and get a shot off as quick as we can. Um, this is a counter-attack, the last goal uh, in this game. Okay, so again, we break away. We anticipate our striker needs to anticipate it. And again, uh, this is actually a good highlight reel for Harry Creed because it's him again. Cuts inside on his favourite right foot and buries it in the far corner. Um, it's quite an important goal, actually. So as you can see by the celebrations, so I think if you see the keeper comes running in, <laughs> getting a little bit carried away, but don't mind that at all. Listen, you've got to enjoy the good moments because there's, there's plenty of bad moments and good moments in football. So enjoy them while you can. 
Um, okay, so this is a typical training session. I'll roll it on. So what we would do, this is placed at Victoria Park, and we look to go up, back and through, um, and we're looking to get across our mannequins and, and put the ball in, get across the far post, come inside to get a finish. Again, so we're looking at the player comes short because he wants it in behind. And we're looking to be proactive, expect the keeper to save it, bounce out or come off the post or whichever. Um, then we would also work on the back four. So you'll see myself behind the back four, um, coaching them there, trying to get us to stay nice and tight and narrow and also then to squeeze out when the ball goes out. And what we'll do is we'll film a video session of the training. So as now, I will talk it through with the boys afterwards on an ana analysis day and I'll let this play. OK, little pattern of play now. What we're trying to do is get our strikers here, a little bit of movement from him. So he wants the ball to be played in behind. And if he wants the ball played in behind, then he's got to show two movements, a game of opposite. So his first movement, he wants the ball there. So I need him to come short to play it through. So what we try to create that, we get our right centre back out to our wide player. Wide player pops it back and then we send it through. And also we're looking at movement from this player to get across. If the ball is played in behind, can he get across and become the secondary player into the attack? So it's set back, played through. The striker runs across, staying on side. My wide player coming across and get across the front of the mannequin and finish the ball into the middle of the goal. Similar sort of thing now. This is good movement. The centre-backs pop it across. Again, my striker is going to come short as he does. And as the ball is set back to the centre-back, he makes his run. As he takes his shot, I'm looking for my wide player to be proactive in case of any rebounds as he is. And then just a little tap in at the back post. College program um, shape session, working on the back four or back five, being nice and compact and keeping a straight line, but also squeezing up when the ball goes wide. So first of all, you'll see myself there coaching it. And then we've got a back line of my back line staying there, staying nice and compact, but also in a nice straight line. Don't engage the fallback because we want it to go around, not through till he comes to an area there. And that's when I like my fallback to try and engage because he's in an area where I'm conscious that we need to impact him. Making sure that my back three centre-backs are still nice and compact in the centre of the goal, and as the ball then is intercepted. Second part of this little session was, was when the ball goes back, as we roll it back here, Hold on, just roll it back as the ball comes into the box. The ball goes out. Can we then, as a defending unit, all squeeze up as the ball goes out? So as it comes back, we all trying to get them out. And you see the main centre back there. We've got the line up and we've all squeezed out together. OK, we also then do analysis on, on games and, and goals that we can see. So for me now, they've played the ball, little ball over the top. OK, now they've got their striker there. And then I've got my two centre halves there. OK, now the ball's in the air, roll it on slowly. I'll do it in slow-mo. Bounces down, their striker gets across, very clever. But my centre half's still there, but we're nipping in there. We've got to be a lot more physical, a lot more stronger. He's just pushed past the pair of you and rolled the ball into the net. You know, whereas so again, this, this is where I'm talking over the analysis. Player. As so a game, this, this again, this is another me. crucial game. So if I just, on the edge of their box. we're actually one nil down, okay. and there's about and twenty minutes to we go. We talked about this at the time, and we got James this was there, our last James Wagstaff Mark in their centre forward. Okay, and what we said to James is, listen, if anything comes out into that area. If you're going to be first, you've got to win the ball. If not, you keep their striker facing their goal and force him to play back. If you go and try and win it, you have to be 100% you are going to win it. If you follow what happens, James thinks he's going to win it. He's going in. He's going in. Their striker's clever. Just rolls him. And that's the trouble when you get so tight that the striker will do that to you. Again, now we get it back to our... Again, so I'm just talking about it there and a little bit of analysis on, you know, on a, when and where to show, etc. And we do this with all the players and we do this, we'll have a classroom session and talk it through, you know, because the camera never lies. Um, you know, I could tell them on the sidelines afterwards, but they will see something different during the game. So, you know, right, I'll just let this go out and again. This one now, and James has got the ball coming to him nicely. And I'm looking at this now, and that's a simple ball out to the left side. That's the less risky pass, OK? The risky pass to me is into my centre mid there. Because if that goes astray, they're straight down our goal. Whereas if it goes wide, out to there, and they break away, then they're, they're out there. Regardless that James you might have spotted that they've got no players at that side. It's just the angle of your pass, OK? As it does, it goes into the middle, their player gets it. 
No real worries. The ball's just gone up in the air. But again, like I said, one mistake normally leads to two. And my two centre halves decide, right, we're going for this ball. No one's clear and dominating that. Tom's going up. James is going up. Their striker, again, and I talk about being clever. Bright minds win football matches. Their striker can see you both going for it. And he decides, you know what? I'll just drop off then. Not problem. Drops off. Okay. I look at this now. And the ball is played out wide and through there. And I look at my goalkeeper, your position. You're not moving quick enough across your goal, Josh. Recognising that the ball is being played wide. Your feet work, footwork should be moving across the middle of your goal already. It's not. It's too slow, in my opinion. I play it on in slow-mo. And their ball player's got it now. You still haven't moved quick enough. Play it on a little bit further. Still not quick enough. A little bit further. Look at that angle there. You have to be, in my opinion, well, anybody's opinion, you have to be there at least by now. You always have to force the player to play across you. You haven't got across quick enough, and then he just plays a little toe poke, which is easy enough for you, but because you're slow getting across, you're only able to parry it, and it ends up being a tap-in for them. Okay, going to switch on to the, the next goal, and this is what I talk about, the little disappointments, guys. Okay, it's a throw-in, okay, and I've got three centre halves, one, two, three, and you're all marking space. And in the history of football, I've never known space score yet, okay? We should be picking up the player there. We're not. We're switched off to it. Then all of a sudden, one mistake leads to another. I'm going to roll it on. Okay, James has now recognised it's there, but it's that little, shall I tackle it, shall I not? And to me as a centre-half, you've either got to be full committed and you go through him and the ball, or you stand on your feet and make him beat you. You don't, you nip in and it's, oh, I don't want to touch that. I'll let it go by. Do you see what I mean? Little touch. No. Oh, okay. I've lost it. And then you're, you're pulled out. You're better off giving a free kick there. So you've got to be fully committed to it. Okay. Then as he goes on, you know, again, to me, my keeper, and I'm sorry to pick on this, Josh, but we've got to learn. You should be on that near post to me there. That's where I believe you should be. Make the player have to play across you. Now this player that's unmarked at the back post, shouldn't be but he is if he scores that's not your fault josh but as it comes across the near post you do stop it but it goes across where it must okay so let's just critique and how we do that in games and we would do that and the, I, I highlighted that one that was our big game in the last 32 of the national knockout cup so it was disappointing for the guys but it's all meant productively and it's all meant positively you know so i know i've highlighted josh james um, and a few others in that then. But, you know, I talk it through with them. It's not like you're, you're I'm doing it because I want you to learn from it. But also other players will learn from it as well. Um, so what's the benefit to local clubs in Hereford? OK, the benefit to local clubs is that they will get additional football during the week. They will also be, like I said, the analysis based of it and also trying to get them into men's football. So as to when they come finish the college programme at 18, 19 years old, they're straight into men's football then and, and developing the knowledge of the game so much greater. It's also creating a positive link in partnerships with Cheltenham Town Football Club and also local heritage clubs, which again in itself will provide many, many benefits. A typical timetable of the week at the college will be a Tuesday and a Friday, as I've said, will be the technical and tactical coaching. Wednesday will be a community education football fixture, depending on what, where it is and what sort of time we need to be away. Um, and then Monday or Thursday, depending on your grouping, can either be at college work or a day off. OK, and then at the end of the season, we have a game against our other college programme at All Saints Academy in Cheltenham. But it, the game is played at our first team stadium, the Johnny Rock Stadium. Um, and that is normally the end of April, beginning of May time. So, again, what are the other benefits? The other benefits to being involved with the club. OK, as we've said, regular performance analysis, strength conditioning, discounted for at the first team game, which obviously, you know, playing in League One is brilliant. And as we speak at this moment, we should be staying up, which is a phenomenal achievement. And I know it's been quoted in the press um, by our director of by getting promoted last season. I think we turned water into wine. But if we stay up this season, it'd be like turning it into champagne, which is a phenomenal achievement. And, you know, credit to everyone involved at the club. And also a life apprenticeship, but also be part of the Cheltenham Town family, which is a great family to be involved with that's the sort of kit day match day packages that you guys will be wearing so the match day kit on match days and then the training pack which is alongside it we look at the possible other progression routes we've got one lad actually in the program at the moment who has just been offered as i speak it was yesterday i spoke with him has been offered a four-year scholarship 70 percent i think of the scholarship he's been offered it's in in iowa which is a 
brilliant. And um, that's a four year course. I've got another lad that's going out there who's been involved with myself outside in, in our development center, who's also going out to America. I, that might be at New York. So great opportunities. This is all brought to the players and, and, and we help them through the filming of the games, et cetera, finding out these routes. Other progression routes, semi-professional clubs, regarding our links, like I said, we've got links from step three all the way down to step eight. So plenty of links for when they finish at 18 to go to clubs if it's outside of the local leagues as well. And, and again, sorry, just touching on that. We also use the media training. We do a lot of media work with the players so they will be interviewed. Um, to put them under pressure by their peers. So get them used to that and get them used to using social media and the positives that it can bring as well, whilst also warning of the negatives around it. Success stories, there's been plenty in it. This programme has been running at the football club since 2013, um, which is fantastic. And the, the, the biggest one would be campering. So campering in 2015 was deemed not quite good enough for a professional scholarship with the club. So, and this is why we brought these programmes in, because there were lads at 16 that weren't, quite getting a professional scholarship, but were decent footballers and we wanted to try and see if they could become late developers. Cam did this and, and again, proving everyone wrong, which is what we love and, and going on to get a professional contract and still playing as a pro even to this day, which is, which is fantastic for Cam. Um, Adam Page again has come back to Hereford and played. Pagey is doing exceptionally well as well. Um, another lad that went through the development programme. So a lot of players do go through this and get success from it. Um, also the exposure from it through our media department with the club having 63,000 followers and also with the local press media in, Her in Herefordshire giving us great support. So why become an education player at Cheltenham Town Football Club? Experience the full-time coaching, access to the performance analysis, multiple of high quality progression routes after it and regular chances to train and play with clubs in the football pyramid through ourselves as well as many others. Does the programme work? It's been a fantastic season. It really, really has. I've been very fortunate. They are a great group that I've got this season. Um, and I don't mean talented. Not that they're not. <laughs> what I mean is they've just been a great group. They really have. They've got a bond together this season. We've left to go to Plymouth at, say, half past five, six o'clock in the morning and getting back at seven o'clock at night, which is a long day. Um, but we've enjoyed the experience and it's been a great experience and the reward for them is to get to the last 32. So if you're interested in this, those are my details on screen. Please get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy uh, for you to get in touch and we can share the prospectus with you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you listening. Thanks.